Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Scott here with Concertini.com. Thank you so much for checking out another one of our super cool studio gear reviews. Now the plug-in review for you today, we are taking a look at a very cool drum loop crushing and kind of all around drum processing plugin from Accusonus. This is Beat Former. Now the guys at Accusonus got in touch with us not too long ago and said, hey, we have a bunch of cool plugins. You like cool plugins, right? I said, yes, I do. They said, well, why don't you use some of ours and tell us what you think? I said, I would love to. So we're going to be doing a bunch of different videos on Accusonus's stuff. And in this one, as I said, we are covering Beat Former. Now, when I very first opened Beat Former, I didn't entirely know what to expect. I knew that it was designed to process drum loops, but I didn't really know a whole lot beyond that. And I was pretty impressed right off the bat with just how much you can do with so few controls, because it is overall a pretty simple plugin. But as you guys will see here in a second, it is quite a powerful one. You can do everything from kind of gentle sculpting of the overall tone of a kit or drum bus or set of drum loops or beat, or whatever you may be working with, uh, but you can also go well into the territory of absolutely destroying and mangling your drum loops. So it, it's really quite a cool piece of software. So the interface, as you can see here, is really quite simple. Um, that's one of the things that I really, really like about it. You know, when, you, when you're dealing with these plugins that are kind of meant to do what is inherently a more complicated process, you know, when we're talking about really doing a lot to a drum loop, we're talking about saturation, compression, EQ, uh, distortion, drive, transient shaping, all these different things, you can use different tools for each one of those functions and have a big old stack of plugins, or companies like Accusonus have designed these plugins that are just kind of a one-stop shop, very simple, makes the process a whole lot easier, a whole lot faster, and thereby a whole lot more creative. So I definitely appreciate the simplicity. Starting at the top left here, we have input gain, and then correspondingly on the other side, we have output gain, and we do have a limiter so that if you start going really, really crazy, uh, things don't totally start clipping in your DAW or what have you. Then getting into the meat of our controls here, we really just have four. We have punch, air, squash, and boom all very appropriately named. Punch is very transient shaper-esque. It really pulls out the transients, you know, those kind of attack portion of each of the notes. Air is kind of a general top end EQ saturation slash boost. Squash is a really heavy duty and intense compressor with a ton of character that really helps to bring out the sustain and the room tone. And then finally, boom is more of a low EQ saturation drive, um, you know, kind of boost situation that's really going to bring out the low end of your kit, particularly the kick drum. Now, a few other things to take note of here, we do have this high split knob here, and we also have a few MS or LR switches. The high split determines the crossover point at where some of this stuff is working. But then we also have this really interesting, these two little switches, which cause either the punch or air controls to work in a mid side fashion as opposed to a normal stereo fashion. Definitely something that I appreciate. Mid side processing can be very, very cool when done correctly. So now let's take a listen to some sounds that we can get with Beat Former here. I just have a real simple stock drum loop pulled up in Studio One. Uh, here it is totally dry. Just dead simple, nice sounding acoustic kit, and that's going to create a really nice bed for us to be able to really hear what this plugin can do. So we're going to start at the top here with punch. I'm going to leave all my gain settings as they are, and I'm going to leave the limiter on so that I don't totally blow you guys out of the room. So let's just start fiddling with the punch control. So even just pulling it up to three, you can already hear what it's doing is it's taking the kick and the snare transients, those, those attack uh, hits on the kick and the snare, and it's really bringing them out and then ducking everything else behind them. You know, if you listen to the hi-hats in between. It's helping to bring out those transients and then, like I said, ducking everything, kind of turning everything down in the middle. Now, if we go all the way out to the extreme, you can hear it's really almost muting everything else in the kick at that point besides just those main kick and snare accents. Now, bringing it back into a more reasonable area, let's switch it over to mid side. Now 
Now, this, I think, is a really interesting way of doing what it's doing, because it's basically taking that stereo information and using that to fill in those in-between spaces, whereas in the middle, in that kind of mono center channel, uh, that's where all, the, all the, the kick and the snare is really being pushed out and everything else is being cut back. So it does a really interesting thing to the stereo image of your kit. Now, I will say I'm not a huge fan of this particular punch knob. I think what it does is a little bit extreme. But if you're in the business of really kind of mangling drum loops and really turning them into something really unique and unusual, then, you know, it's definitely something you could play around with. It has a very interesting effect on your signal as a whole. So very, very cool approach. Now you can, of course, also pull your punch into the negative. And that has a really interesting effect because instead of pulling out the transients, it actually brings back the transients and tries to push out some more of the room tone. If we flip it over into mid-side. It almost, it does the inverse of what it was doing when it was in the positive on the mid-side. It's only sending the transients to the stereo image and then pulling out all that kind of middle space and room tone in the center. So overall, a very interesting control. Like I said a moment ago, it's it's a little aggressive for my taste, um, but overall, I think it's definitely doing uh, some very interesting stuff and you could probably find some very creative uses for it. And again, this high split control is going to affect kind of where in this frequency spectrum everything is happening. So that's a nice kind of a tonal sculpting option there. So now moving on, taking a listen to this air band, this is a little bit more of an EQ kind of a thing, EQ slash saturation, and you're gonna be hearing it on the, on the top end of everything. So right now we have our high split set at 8K, that frequency spectrum 8K and above is what's mainly gonna be affected by this air control. You can hear it's not just an EQ. It's not like just a, a high shelf. I think there's some dynamics processing going on in there as well. Um, and then, of course, bringing it back is going to kind of make everything a little bit darker, which could be very cool if you're going for more of a lo-fi old school sound. And again, this high split. Is really what's determining the, the crossover point where that error EQ saturation is kind of kicking in. And then you can switch this one over into mid-side as well. And there you can kind of hear the dynamic stuff that's going on. I'm not entirely sure what it's doing. It's kind of compressing a little bit up there and trying to pull out some different frequencies, which was kind of interesting. But overall, a, a very uh, interesting and very cool control um, that I could see a very practical use for in a lot of different circumstances. You know, it, it, it almost makes me think of like really any sound source, not just drums, like maybe vocals or guitar. If you're lacking some of that top end detail, this could be a cool tool to bring that back. Or in more of a drum application, you know, pulling it down is going to give you a really nice um, sort of dark tone on your drums that's going to give them a very a very vintage feel. So overall, another very cool tool to have in here. Now, squash is probably my favorite knob, and here's why. just absolute destruction. <laughs> you know, you can tell it's a very, very heavy duty compressor basically is what the squash is. And at least when you push it into the positive and it really just has a, a really great way of bringing out a lot of mid range girth, a lot of really pleasing saturation and just absolutely slamming the signal, which I, I love that sound, that very break beady uh, kind of compression sound on drum loops, I think is really cool. And this is like one knob, gives it to you instantly. So very, very cool. Now, when you pull it negative, it has a very different effect. It almost starts functioning like an expander where it's gonna, it's gonna pull the dynamic range out a little bit. 
and start doing a little bit more transient shaping, you're going to get a little bit more focus on the transients uh, themselves, you know, kind of similar to what the punch knob is doing, but it's a little bit gentler, which I like. Almost has elements of like gating to it. Again, because these are all, you know, it's a squash knob. It's not a compression knob. It's not a limiting knob. It's not a gate threshold or something like that. It's squash. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on internally in the algorithm that's that's making it do whatever it's doing. But I really, really like it, especially, of course, you know, you go into this positive. <laughs> And it's just fantastic lo-fi, dirty compression decimation. Really, really great for like rock production, really great for hip hop production. Um, this is probably the feature within this plugin that I, I will be using the most. And then finally, coming around the, the ring here, we have Boom. And this really just helps to bring out the low end of the kit. Very, very nice. It adds a lot of really nice low end kind of third order harmonic saturation and just brings out the subs in your kick without affecting a lot of the rest of the signal. So I kind of view this plugin almost as, as two sections in, in one plugin. You have the boom in the air and those are going to be a, a little bit more subtle a little bit more versatile and those are more in the in the direction of kind of restoring or enhancing the sound of a beat or of a kit because you can add some extra low end thud you can add a little bit of of extra air on top and you know you go from something that might be a little plain jane to something that's just a little more hi-fi, a little more polished, a little bit more in your face. But then when you get into the punch and the squash knobs, that's much where you get into the more sort of uh, destructive uh, element of working working with, uh, with your drum loops. You know, you give it a little bit of punch, maybe in the mid side, and then squash. <laughs> And you just have a, a totally different, uh, distorted, aggressive, super forward sounding uh, drum loop when you started with something that was that was really simple and basic. So, you know, it, it's a very cool tool overall, and it sounds really, really good. My one complaint slash point of confusion is just this punch knob. I don't really get it. You know, I use transient shaping when mixing drums all the time to really sculpt like the kick and the snare and really make the snare pop and really make the kick uh, jump out of the speakers at you. I'm a big fan of that. And this punch, it's doing more and what it's doing in the stereo image. I'm just, I'm not entirely certain of what it's doing. Maybe if I were using it on a mono source, it would make a little bit more sense to me or, or something like that. But other than that, I think everything else in here is really, really, really cool. The squash is killer sounding when you push it into that compression realm the air is a really nice kind of top end sweetener the boom sounds really really meaty on the kick overall just a very very cool tool and of course we do have a variety of presets here that they've included this is high five so just kind of a general sweetener intensify it's a bit more of like a dirty mangling thing lo-fi you know really quite lo-fi in a very cool and very unique way rebreather kind of a similar effect obviously it's really just mainly designed for doing these couple particular things to drum loops so I can't call it a hyper versatile plugin. You know, it's not something you're going to really be using much on guitars or vocals. The air band might come in handy. I will say that. I almost wish that they made a plugin that was just a refined version of this because I could see that being a really useful tool if, say, somebody sends you a vocal that doesn't have enough top end air to it. And instead of just high shelling it, you could use something like this that would really sweeten out um, that top end, that could be a very useful tool. But other than that, you know, in terms of, of this plugin, obviously it's, it's meant for drums. It's not gonna be doing a whole lot else. But as far as 
something that's designed to work only on drums, I think it's a very, very cool and very useful little tool. I will definitely be using, next time I need to do like a lo-fi breakbeat thing, I will definitely be pulling out beat former. So I give it a thumbs up. Uh, at time of filming, I believe it is $49.99 US for a license for this guy. Um, so pretty affordable as far as plugins go. Uh, if you do a lot of drum processing or, you know, again, a lot of like breakbeat, hip hop, drum and bass kind of stuff, um, I can see this being a very usable tool. And if you got 50 bucks to spend, you want to blow up some loops? Highly recommend it. Before I get out of here, I do have to say thank you so much to the guys at Akisonas for sending me a license to this and indeed the rest of all their plugins. Having a great time checking out their stuff. I think they're a very cool company doing some very innovative things. So big shout out to those guys. But regardless, what do you guys think of Beatformer? What do you guys think of these kind of all in one drum processing plugins? Do you have some that you like? Is this something you use in your workflow? Please let me know in the comments down below. I always love hearing from you guys. If you have not yet subscribed to the Concertini YouTube channel, please do that as well. It really helps us out. Click that subscribe button and be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when we upload new videos. If you enjoy this, want to give it a like, a share, that would be greatly appreciated as well. In any case, my name is Alex Scott with Concertini.com. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Hope you dug it, and we will see you in the next video.